Okay, however you're going to achieve it, put the right rope over the high point. You may want to fire the line or uh, pre-climb the tree and place the line in there. One metre from the end, put a figure eight knot in there, one metre tail as a stopper knot and make sure the rope's onto the ground. To achieve our anchor on another tree, we'll pick up all our rope, walk right around the tree a full round turn and prepare to tie our half inches from there. Making sure you go underneath the rope that's coming from our top point. First half hitch, second half hitch, third half hitch, all going the same way and plenty of tail. Sometimes an advantage to hold this rope down here because the um, cams tend to lift the rope up until you get enough weight hanging below him to let the cams go. we've decided to change this into a lowering system now so what we've got to do in this case we've got enough rope here on the ground so I'll flake the rope away from where I'm going to be working and start from the far end first and flake on top of it in this case I'll undo the coil into a pile so that as I need the rope it will be on top of the pile Flaking the rope. This means, means there's no knots or kinks or things you're going to muck up. Right back till we get to the knot system and then we know we're ready to undo the hitches on the knot. At all times when you're undoing the hitches you must be hanging on to the side of the rope that is going to be at the mechanical advantage around our friction point. If you get too involved up here, the rope might be pulled out of your hand or you lose control and the climber falls. While you've got this here, he can't fall. So you're basically undoing the knot one-handed, but at all times you've got control with the other hand. Once those half hitches are off, it now ceases to be an anchor point, it's a lowering point. So by now feeding the rope in, we can lower Bill back to the ground. And the rope's coming off the top of the pile in the correct fashion. Okay. We don't have enough rope to uh, lower the person back to the ground, so we must extend this system somehow for it to work. Uh, the importance of having the knot done on the bite as opposed in single is that we can now attach another rope to this one before we undo our anchor and change it into a lowering system. So let's do that now. The knot preferred will be a double fisherman's and in this case you must leave plenty of tail. Hand on top, thumb to the side, over the thumb once, over the thumb a second time on the hand side and along the direction the thumb's pointing, turn around Hand on top, thumb to the side, over the thumb once, over the thumb the second time on the hand side, along the direction the thumb's pointing. Always do a visual check on our knots. Four parallel pieces of rope this side, two vague crosses the other. Visually the knot's correct. Now we've extended our rope into, in this case, it's flaked into a bag. Sometimes you may have to flake a second rope on the ground. Now we have enough rope. We can undo our anchor system and change into a lowering system. Hand on our advantage side or mechanic advantage side of the friction. Right, we've taken the uh, two half inches off the rope, so now this ceases to be an anchor point, it's a lowering point and we'll watch the path of the knot as it goes around the tree and you'll see the advantage of taking your turns underneath the rope 
coming down. It passed Dunhinder around the tree and continues up towards the lowering point. What we've got to do here is uh, figure out the lengths our tape should be uh, critical for the efficiency of what we're going to do. So we put our foot in the bottom of the foot tape, and that should mean that the chest is about the uh, ascender is about chest high. If it's much lower than that, it's inefficient to be hanging on down here. If it's sitting up too much higher, it reduces the amount you can lift your hand up to the top position. So about chest high is ideal. The second tape length is the safety tape and that runs from the ascender to your harness or the strong point on your harness. To get the length of that we reach up almost to the top of our reach and that's where we should be secured. That means any time if you, if you stop for a rest or we'll have to regain your ascenders it's still with an easy grasp and allows you the maximum amount of distance you can move your ascender up and down. If we do that for each ascender we then have the two ascenders with the tape lengths exactly right and I've colour coded them to lessen the confusion when I'm in the tree. I'll use green for the right hand for instance, blue for the left and they correspond to the same feet. First, to do the frog method, the first ascender we've got to attach is the chest or body ascender. Now, the primary aim in attaching this is to get it as low as possible on the body. If the ascender is up here somewhere, it limits the range of movement of our top ascender because they're both fixed on the same rope to that. By getting it down lower, we then increase it to a lot more. The potential is there. The other reason is when it's attached to your harness there is a certain amount of movement in the ascender so by getting it as low as possible to start with we don't wind up with it far too high to operate correctly so let's attach it to the lowest point possible on our harness in this case I've chosen to put the crab through the actual harness rather than utilizing the loop and that's got it down even lower the next step is to attach a chest harness and fix the top of this to it You can have a production type chest harness or a manufactured one. I tend to always go for an improvised to get the length it should be. If it's made into a loop with a tape knot, it should almost touch around your chest. You make a figure eight with it and put an arm in each slot. Put one over, then the other. Although well, a little bit rough, we've now got ourselves a chest harness. Put a screw gate through there and then attach the top of the ascender. Although tight and feeling very restrictive, 
that's ideal because the ascender can't go up or down any more than we want it to. We now can fix that into there. The path for the rope when you look down it is nice and free, the carabiner isn't interfering and it's not running right against our harness. Ideal positioning for the ascender, there's a clear path through the, where the rope's got to go, right to the ground and past your body. Next ascender to fit to our system is the top ascender and for this first of all we need to have a safety device or tape from the bottom of this to the strong point in our harness. That means we've got to back up if one fails. We'll just use a tape on the end of that. And clip that into our, into our strong point. We now can't come off the rope in two positions. All we need now is a, another tape to go to our feet. And the position for all that should be from about here and our feet should be standing in the loop. I already have one ready to go. You can see by the length of that that we've now have the maximum range of movement and remain attached at all times. That's ideal for the frog method.